Welcome to Blue Collar Coder's in-depth look at arrays. Last time we looked at how to iterate over arrays. This time we're gonna take a look at how to find items in arrays, and of course, see if there's anything worth finding. Let's go jump right into the code. So let's start off with a list of numbers, and let's say that I wanna get the first three numbers out of this list. So what I could do, is, for example, is say first equals, and then give it numbers zero, and that's gonna give me 10, I can get second, and that's going to give me 20. But that's not actually the easiest way to do this. The easiest way to do this is with destructuring. So let me comment this out and show you how that works. I do const, and then I open brackets, and I say the variable names that I want. So for example, first, second, and third. And if I equate that to that array, then it actually sets those values. For example, first, second, and third. If you're familiar with React, then this is how use state works. For example, you get the state and then the set state from use state. There's no magic here. The only thing that's happening is that use state is returning an array, and we're just grabbing state and use state off that array. All right, but in this case, let's say that I want to also get the 40 and 50. How would I do that? Well, I can use the spread operator to get that. So I add in comma and then rest or any variable name you like actually in this case. And rest is then an array that contains 40 and 50. So that brings up this awesome spread operator and you can use that to do a copy of an array. So let's go over to PT2 copies and I'm gonna copy in this numbers array and now I can see that numbers is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And I can make a copy of that. So let's say const copy of numbers equals and then an array with the spread of numbers. And now if I do copy of numbers, it's also 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So let's say I make a change to the first item in copy of numbers and set that to 100. Let's see what copy of numbers is. Now copy of numbers is 100, 20, 30, 40, 50. But let's see, has that mutated numbers? Let's go check that out. And it has not mutated numbers. It's pretty cool, right? That's what you'd expect of a copy, hopefully. So what about an array full of objects or arrays full of arrays? Let's try that out. So we're gonna create an array that has people in it and that people is going to be an array where the first person has a name of John and the second person has a name of Jane. Fine, okay, cool. So we'll put that out there. Yep, that's fine. Let's go make a copy of it, copy of people. Do just like we did before with numbers, but we'll do this instead with people. Now we get copy of people. Yep, that's what we expect. And then we'll go and set the first item's name to Jack. And we'll take a look at what copy of people is. Now copy of people says name is Jack. And let's take a look at people. And people is also in the first position, name is Jack. So what's up with that? Let's go take a look. So when it came to our array of numbers, that's just an array of scalars. And in JavaScript, a number, a string or boolean is a scalar and when you have an array of scalars that array just contains all of those scalars and when you make a copy of that you just make a copy of all those scalars and then you can just change the value and that's fine but when you have objects you actually don't have the value in there you have a reference to the object so in this case you have two references and you've got the objects named john and named jane and then when we did the copy, we actually created another array that had references to those same objects. And now here, when I changed that to Jack, both of those arrays pointed to that same object. And that meant that now both of them had name as Jack. So why is this? Well, JavaScript is supposed to be a performant language that has a lightweight memory footprint. So in order to do that, you wanna maintain references to objects and it is assumed that it, when in the case that you need a clone, that you go off and do that. So what's a good way to do that? Well, there's Lodash's clone deep for that. All right, let's go ahead back to the code. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about how to find items in an array by index. So let's try to find the index of one of these items. So we'll start off with console log and then I'll say names and then I'll say index of and then give it Alice. And that's right, Alice appears at zero, so cool. 
So let's start at one and see if there's another Alice. And yes, there is one at four. And let's see what happens when we look for something that isn't in there. So we'll say Sally in this case, and that gives us negative one. You can also do last index of, so let's try that. Last index of, give it Alice, and then we get the last index in there as well. So what happens if you want to be able to have more precise control over the finding method? Well, you can use the find index method, and that takes a function that you define, and you get to go across all of the items and you return true if you found something and false if you haven't. So let's try that out. Let's do console.log names and then find index. In this case, you got to give it a function and that function has got to return true or false. So in this case, we've got a name, right? And we want to see, well, does the name equal Bruce? And now that returned true at item three. And so we get three as the return index off that. Of course, you don't need that in this case, but if you want to do something like a regular expression, this would be a great way to do that. Or if you had objects that you were going through and needed to look at specific keys, this would also be a great case for that. In terms of performance though, if you can get by with using index of or last index of, it is far more performant than find index. In my testing, it was an order of magnitude slower to use find index versus index of. So in addition to find index, there's also find. So let's go play with that. So I've got again our names and we'll do console.log and then we can say names.find and then again, we'll have the value and we can say you know, find when value is Alice and now you get Alice back, which is okay, right? I mean, now you're getting back the same string that you knew you already had, but let's try it out with something like people and now we can get an object. So we can say person equals, and then use that same finder. So we can say people.find. And then in this case, we're gonna have a person and we'll just take that person's name and say, is it Jane? And now we've got the object with person Jane. So we'll put that out there, cool. And again, it's a reference. So if we were to change that to Sally, it would mutate that person in that array. So if we go back to people at this point, now that person is actually mutated in the original array, again, because person is a reference and not a copy of that object. All right, well, let's finish up by taking a look at sum, every, and includes. So we'll start off with some numbers that include both positive and negative. So in this case, we got 10 minus 20, 30 minus 40, and then 50. And let's just First off, see if we include one of those numbers. Numbers that includes and then 10, that's true. Again, this is an old school native method, so it's incredibly fast. If you can get away with using includes like this, do it. But of course, ES6 added some and every, which are really handy as well. So let's try these out. So I wanna see if at least one of the numbers in our array is positive. So to do that, I'm going to use the sum method. So I'm going to do numbers.sum, and again, you give it a function, which in this case takes a number, and we'll say, is the number greater than zero? Excellent. So somewhere along the line in that array, this was true. In fact, it was true in, I guess, three different cases. And so sum returns true because some of the values in the array match your criteria. Now, what happens if I change out sum for every? I get false because not every single item in the array is positive. So in the case of every, this predicate has to return true for everything. In the case of sum, this predicate has to return true just for one of the items in the array. All right, so let's review and see what we've learned in this episode. So I've looked at destructuring and how to get data out of an array efficiently. We've looked at copies of arrays and how in some cases those are copies of scalar values and in some cases those are copies of references and why that is very important and how to get around that. We looked at how to find an index of an item in an array. We looked at how to find the object in an array and we've looked at includes some and every which are ways to figure out what you actually have in your arrays. Well, so I hope you enjoyed that and in the next video we're going to take a look at filter. 
But in the meantime, if you have any questions about what you've seen here, be sure to put those in the comments section down below. If you like the video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you really like the video, be sure to hit the subscribe button, click on the bell, and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.